What's up everybody? Today we're going to be doing palindrome number on lead code. It is another easy question, but we'll see how easy it is. So I've went ahead and copied down everything the lead code tells us. Basically, we're told that uh, to determine whether an integer is a palindrome, and an, we're told that an integer is a palindrome when it reads the same backward as it does forward. And so one example of a palindrome would be 111 because everything in it is the same number and so of course it'll read the same back as it does front but um, we're also given the case one two three so if we're given one two three let's see what it should be in this case because when we split the string down the middle it is not the same as it is read from the front as it is read from the back we would return false and now let's take a look in 989 when we split this string down the middle like that we see that it is the same, we read 9 here and a 9 here, and so it's going to be read the same front to back. It can kind of be split up into two cases. The first case is when the number has odd amount numbers, and that's like a 989 type of case. And it's different because we're splitting it up on a number, and so this number could be anything. Um, it doesn't matter as long as the number's odd and the numbers that are not the middle number match up then it will be a palindrome. The other case is when we have an even amount of numbers and so here when we split it down the middle it doesn't land on a specific number so we just need to see does when we read it 1 2 from the front does it read the same from the back and so we'll read it 1 2 and it does and so we would return true because it's a palindrome. And so let's take a look at the algorithm we're going to use to solve this problem. So the first thing you might have thought of is to just reverse the number and compare it to the original number that were passed in. And that's great intuition. Um, that's the way I solved it at first too. But um, there's actually a way that we can do it in, and so that would be O of N time. And there's actually a way we can do it in O of N over two time. And that's if we just compare the first half to the last half reversed. And so let me show you what that means. Basically, if we have 9, 7, 3, 3, 7, 9, what we're going to do is we're going to create a variable. or So this is passed in as x. And then the first thing we're going to do is make a variable called result. And we'll initialize it to 0. And now, basically, we're going to take this last half of the number, reverse it, and then check does result equal x. And if it does, then we can return true. If you check out another one of my videos about reversing an integer, that's basically what we're doing. So we're just going to pop off the last digit by saying x mod 10. And so we get that. And then we're going to divide x by 10 to get rid of that last digit. And to add it to result, we're going to say result is equal to result times 10 plus this digit. And all that does is basically shift it over the previous result um, shift it over to the left one to make room for our current ones digit um, in the ones place and so we'll continue doing this until we get till x is not greater than result and then when x is not greater than result we need to check to see if x is equal to result and if it is we can return true but it's not as simple as that because if we remember back to the previous example, x will not always have an even number of digits. So if we look at like one two one, if we were using our previous, if we we're using the solution we just talked about, we would first initialize result to zero, and then get the last digit of x by modding it by ten, and add that to result, and keep doing this until x is not greater than result. And so we do that until here. And so we see that when we go to check is x equal to result, it's clearly not because 1 does not equal 12. And so we need to add another condition where if x equals result divided by 10, then we know that we can return true and that it's a palindrome number. And the reason because this works is because earlier we talked about how it doesn't matter what the middle number is. Um, like this 2 could be a 7 and when we go through our process we'll move the 1 over and then we'll move the 7 over 
And here we can divide by 10 to chop off that middle number because we know that it doesn't matter what it is. And so now we just need to see does this number equal x? And if it does, we can return true. So let's start coding it. All right, so just like in our written solution, the first thing we're gonna do is create a resolve variable. And then next, we're told that if x is less than zero, then we can return false because it's a negative number. And so we can add that. And I'm also gonna add another condition saying if x mod 10 equals zero. So if the number ends in zero and x is not zero, then what we're gonna do is also return false because we're told in the problem that numbers like 10 are not um, are not palindromes and so it's kind of like an easy way to right off the bat eliminate some answers. And so now that we've done that, we can go ahead and just say return false. All right, so now we're just gonna have a while loop that goes um, while x is greater than result, just like in our written solution. And inside our while loop, we're gonna grab the last digit really quick and we're just gonna say int cur equals to x mod 10. And now, now that we have that last digit, we can say x is equal to divide by 10. And so we're just chopping off that last number. And now we can say result is equal to result times 10 plus that last digit that we just grabbed. And so that's reversing the last half of the number. And so because that's all we need in our while loop, we can just return now. And so if we remember back to our written solution, we returned if x was equal to result, and that's the case where there's an even number of numbers. And then if there was an odd amount of numbers, then we returned x equals to result divided by 10. And it sounds kind of tricky, but all we have to say is return x equal to result or x equal to result divide by 10. And let's see how that works. And I made a simple mistake of adding this uh, negation operator. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. And there we go. Um, faster than 100% of solutions. And our memory usage, it's, it's decent. Um, and so now let's talk about the time complexity. And so if we look at our loops, we see that our, we have one while loop and it's basically going over half of X because we're chopping off the last half of X and reversing it. And so we'll say that this has a time complexity of N over two, which is roughly N. And so talking about space complexity, if we look, um, we're not really making any extra data structures, and so we're just gonna have a constant amount of space used. And so that's how you do the is palindrome question on LeetCode. If you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you. And as always, have a good day.